Um, my question is about the Middle East. Uh, if you can speak to us about what's happening there and if we're going to be able to apply the integral theory anytime soon in our lifetime to that belly uh, of the world. Just give us well, some hope, Ken. <laughs> Bill, Bill Clinton has been quoted now saying that the problem with the Middle East is less than 2% of the world's population is integral. So I'm going with him. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with that answer. Um, yeah, it's, oh boy. I mean, if, 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 if anything is a reminder of, you know, what samsara can be, it's, it's the Middle East. And um, I, the first thing that I think is just the enormous suffering, the absolute enormous suffering. Uh, I mentioned Rabbi Mark Gaffney, um, who's a, just a, I, one of really just a handful of my dearest, dearest friends. I love this man. He's, he's in his 40s, and he will tell stories of his son going to school, and his, two, his son's two best friends just were blown up by grenades. I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's devastating. And so th there's that human suffering that's absolutely you know, just overwhelming on this side of the street. And then on this side of the street, it's arising in the great perfection. And so that's that intersection that we always have to remember. And you have to be able to both just almost sob hysterically at the suffering and realize that there's nobody suffering. It really, you have to kind of have, if you don't have that spaciousness in which it's all arising, you really will go start raving insane if you see the situation clearly. So. That we, that's, again, we want to remember both the emptiness and form side of what's going on. And then on this manifest side, the Medias is extremely problematic for many, many reasons. But here's a real simple overview of it. It's possibly the only place on the world where you find the following. If you look at a really, really good book like um, Samuel Huntington's Clash of Civilizations, where he shows nine large civilization blocks. And these are ones that you would expect. They're um, you know, Western and sort of Russian, Sino-Russian, Chinese, et cetera. So then each of these nine civilization blocks um, are ethnocentric. I mean, that, that's just sort of, that's the nature of when they were growing up. You go from egocentric to ethnocentric to world-centric. And there was a time when we went from sort of warring tribes that were separate to large sort of empire, geopolitical empires. And those are the large civilization blocks that are still left. And human beings, as they grow and develop, they have to grow and develop through them because you, you don't skip stages and everybody start, starts at square one. Even if we live in an enlightened society, you start at the bottom, you have to go through. So you have these nine civilization blocks. It's not necessarily in today's world a bad thing, but it does mean that since 70% of the world's population is at ethnocentric or lower, then 70% of the world's population are locked into nine blocks that don't like each other. So we got that going for us. So you've got people that really have a communication problem. They have a history differences. They sometimes have different currency. They have different languages. They have different customs. They often have different religions. So you have these nine blocks, and you can expect wherever any of the, they're like tectonic plates of culture. And wherever they rub against each other, it's, it's, it's always been messy. So that's one part of it. Second part of it is you just look at the vertical development. And you have cultures whose center of gravity are red or blue or orange or green. In the Middle East, in about a, two square block area, <laughs> there are three civilization blocks smashed into each other and three or four vertical levels of each. It's it, 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 the most conflict-ridden turf in the known universe. And, and how, it's that three-dimensional hatred that is such a nightmare. And so, how do you handle something like that? Obviously, you know, if I had the answer to that. Um, we do have a whole World Federation, you know, unit at, at Integral Institute that has got a lot of very, very bright people. And we are involving Al Gore and Newt Gingrich and Bill Clinton and so on in it because it can't be partisan. It has to be... Um, as close to second tier as you can get it. And really great political theorists are all thinking yellow, even though their center of gravities are blue. 
or orange or green. And so the simple things, and at this point, I, all you can do is devolve into cliches. You talk to people who are in positions of power, and often people in positions of power are second, they have yellow cognition, even if their center of gravity is red or blue or orange. And because of that, they can see an integral bigger picture, and they, can they like the big picture because it makes sense to them of what's happening. And, and because it's broad enough and generalized enough, they can actually use it as a map to orient the nightmare that they're in. Once you get people talking at that level, it robs them of the fierceness of their exclusive identification with the first tier value. So that's about the most we can do right now. And people from Gaffney to Clinton, all these people are slowly more and more getting involved in this kinds of conversation. We have the State of the World Forum, which is over 6,000 world leaders, which is founded by Mikhail Gorbachev and Jim Garrison. And virtually every major world leader, when they get out of office, they join the State of the World Forum. And Jim and I, there's really, um, Jim has done this basically on his own for uh, a decade, but it was his version of trying to do an integral, aqua world forum conversation. And so we're just going to move that. It looks like right now we're in the process of trying to move that into a domain at Integral University where that kind of conversation can occur. But for us right now, it's trying to get people to just think in those terms. Action has got to come much, much, much later. But if the cognitive line isn't pushed up, none of these others are going to do it either. So that's our hope. What about business leaders? About what? If we start with business leaders. Yes, same. Business, uh, politics, government, education, and NGOs. And entertainers, rightly or wrongly. They, they have instant access. And we're very, very fortunate to have an enormous number of people in Hollywood that are supporting this. Can you just clarify what the three stages, what the three civilizations are, and what stages they're at? Instead of it's basically Eastern Orthodox, Arab, and Western. Those are the civilization blocks. And then the three levels that immediately come into play and are um, red, blue, orange, and then Western green coming over and trying to make everybody go through sensitivity <laughs> training. <Okay. laughs> yeah. And they try, they want to particularly they tried having like Saddam Hussein have like sensitivity training before he tortured people. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like sensitivity training in the morning, torture in the afternoon, rape and pillage in the evening. It's like a full calendar when you have to add sensitivity training <laughs> to all this other shit you're doing when you're over there. So those are the, <laughs> it's really a mess. It's three or four vertical and three or four horizontal. And the permutations and combinations for terror are huge. The, and again, you have to do levels and lines because the, many of the great strategists on all sides think yellow. Um, some of the people in Osama bin Laden's group, they, it wasn't just that they were going to, they weren't doing just tactics. They knew strategically that if they hit some of these things, it, it would have a whole world devastating effect. That's a yellow strategy. So it's but it, it really, I, in terms of centers of gravity, though, it's astonishing to find, with the exception of inner city Detroit, a place that has that many things stacked on top of each other. But it's really unfortunate, too. Yeah. 